Hello and welcome to this Train Team TV video. This is Mark. Today we're taking a look at the Victory Works GWR Mana Pack, which has been recently released on the Steam Sound Supreme website. I've already had a little drive of this loco, really enjoyed it, and decided that I want to do a video on it just because I want to showcase it a little bit. I believe it deserves quite a lot of credit because it's it's a pretty decent uh, simulation, a really good model. Um, quite enjoying it. So this is one of the three included scenarios. You get three scenarios with the pack. Um, would have been nice to have a few more I suppose but this is one of the ones that's included this is the Paddington Express uh, based on Saturday the 20th of August 1960 today we are driving 7808 Cookham Manor on the Newton Abbott to Paddington Express two services from Kinsweed and Plymouth have joined have been joined together to make the combined service to Paddington and due to an engine failure we'll be taking the full train onwards this scenario is based on the actual 1960 timetable service and it says begin by allowing the passengers to board, press T. So I'm going to close the window and begin. Hopefully I can get the sound bouncing right because with steam ones it can be quite difficult. So I've opened the doors. Uh, just hoping I can get the sound bouncing right on this video. So I can't... That's the wrong button. Can't lay out Newton Abbott. I just... Uh, Taking a look at the loco, it's immaculate. It's in X Works condition. As always with these packs, you get quite a variety of uh, liveries and stuff. Now, one thing I'm noticing, I'm not sure if it's my TS settings or what, but I'm noticing it seems to get really dark around some areas. So, like there, it's really dark. Now, it's in shade, obviously, but for some reason, it's really dark. I'm just going to have a little play with my uh, TS settings to see if there's anything, oh, for Christ's sake. See if there's anything that I've done my end. So that's activated now. I'm just I'm just checking the shaders. So you can see it's changing now. That's the darkest one. And that's the lightest one. So that's as light as I can get the game to go. Obviously I can go into the options and change the contrast a bit. But even when I'm changing the contrast, I still feel in the cab it's a little bit dark as well now I don't know if this is a problem for everybody, it may just be my setup but I do apologise that it is so dark if that's not how it's meant to be I can only apologise for how dark it is on my screen so yeah we're at New and Abbott here, we're just waiting for the right away quite a long train so I uh, should make it work quite hard I'm running in advanced mode, you get uh, the advanced and standard modes um, and it's been really good to drive so far when I've driven it around. One thing I do like is the gradual way the loco sort of blows off, you can sort of see the valve sifting gradually more and more steam goes through, the volume increases as well as the uh, loco blows off more and it's just actually blown off now. I do like that. Overall, detailing seems really nice. Uh, I'm going to look more in detail at it, but I'm really impressed with it so far. So we've got the right way. Got the signal. I'm just going to check that I'm in. Yeah, because you can press Control and A to turn advanced mode on and off. So I've just turned advanced mode on. So now I need to release the brakes and then the ejector, see this is the issue I've got, is I can't actually see the ejector it's in such a dark spot so I pulled the ejector down there you can now see the vacuum rising now because we've got quite a long train the brakes are going to take forever to release so you've got to remember that with vacuum brakes the longer your train the more time it takes for the brakes to release so if I was only on a one coach train the brakes would be fully released by now and on a Great Western loco train the brakes goes up to 25 psi uh, on vacuum rather than 21 psi and this loco is quite interesting in that if you run low on boiler pressure the brakes actually drag back on because it's uh, operated by steam obviously to release the brakes so I'm going to start preparing to leave as always with a victory works loco I'm going to make sure the cylinder cocks are open I'm just going to let the loco talk for the next couple of minutes as we leave here before I uh, come back in again.
Well, announced the range of sounds levers we've left, so we've departed New Navar now. Next stop for us is Teenmuth. So, next up, I'm going to mess about with the fire a little bit. You can actually see the 3D grate rocking up and down. The coal uh, there's some really nice sound effects going on in here. You can actually hear that, the uh, some nice clanging sounds and stuff that I've not heard before in a, a Steam Sound so Boom set of sounds. So in terms of the fire, 3D great. So you can see the coal there is really low on the bars. So I'm going to turn the fire on. Now you can actually see with a shovel, the more you turn it up, so hold R to turn the uh, fireman on to make him short coal. And that shovel angle tells you how fast he's going to be shoveling. So I'm going to set it medium sort of range. Now if you keep making the fireman shovel for ages, it says in the manual that he'll actually run out of energy at some point, which is quite a cool little feature. It'd certainly be interesting to see on a long climb like white ball or something that actually uh, comes to fruition. It keeps you on your toes. In terms of the fire mass, um, just trying to find it in the manual because it's quite a detailed, in advanced mode, there's quite a detailed way to fire in this local. So, in terms of the coal level, less than 42% of coal is 661 pounds, uh, and that's fire mass on the left hand side of the screen there. So, we're currently at 926. So I'm going to turn the fireman off with shift and R to put the shovel back over there. I'm going to shut the fire hole doors. So, less than 42% of coal is £661 fire mass. The average level of coal is £992, which is roughly where we are now. That's what you need to have it really. Um, if you're going to be sort of average running. And if you, probably, you can put the whole coal level to high, uh, with an 85% coverage, which makes the coal go really high up in the firebox. Um, and that's at £1,338. Now it doesn't actually tell you an ideal fire mass, so um, I'm guessing that the 85% one may well be the ideal one, but it doesn't actually tell me, so I don't honestly know. I'm quite happy how this is going at the minute. 46 miles an hour. I'm going to shut up again whilst we go along the estuary and let the locomotive do the talking for a bit. So that was quite a spirited run, 60 miles an hour there. So we're at line speed, I've just left the regulator cracked open um, to keep it moving and keep everything lubricated. Fire mass is currently at 920 pounds. I am still thinking that everything's a little bit dark, but again, I, I'm honestly not sure if that's my system or not. I'd be interested to hear in the comments what other people think, but to me it looks a little bit on the dark side. And I don't mean dark side of the force either. 
But you see, like there with the tender, the tender's actually now a different colour to the boil, which... I don't know, it just looks a little bit strange. I mean, in terms of actual detail, the whole thing looks lovely. Um, quite happy with that. Uh, can't really see the number, but I think the number spacing has been corrected in the uh, last weeks of development. There was a bit of a discrepancy there with how it was a, a lot of wider spacing than the numbers, but that seems to have been fixed, which is really good. Uh, we've got the reporting number on the front, so you can't really see that. But it's certainly a, a beautiful looking loco. It has got fully animated uh, inside motion as well, which I really like. So I'm going to get some brakes in in a second. Quite a challenge slowing down a long train with how long the brakes take to uh, come back off again. We're just about to uh, stop at the team off. So to shut the regulator there, I've had to just fully open it. You may have noticed there, because that's a, a simulation of the valves that you get on Great Western Locos. Uh, and that's when you sort of open the regulator and it, it'll stay slightly open. You have to actually fully open it to shut it again. Uh, and that's all detailed in the manual, far better than I can ever explain it. They really are quite complicated beasts, these Locos. and. Uh, Easy to understand why a lot of people don't like driving steam necessarily, but it's so much of a, a challenge, which is uh, something I really enjoy. So I'm going to put a bit of water in now. So I'm going to look behind here. We got the can't really see them. Okay, I've seen them a bit better now. You got the water handles on the back of the tender here. So I'm going to hold K and L to fully turn those on. And then the injector handles are in the cab, and you see them at the top just about turning. Hold them fully when I'm uh, stood at the station, I can adjust it with I and O and shift as well to adjust how the um, water goes in. And when it makes this singing sound that it's now making, is when the water's actually going in. Our next stop for us is Dawlish. Open the cylinder cocks again. And we're just waiting once again for the brakes to actually come off as well. Now I'm not hearing the ejector sounds even though the ejector is on, which is weird. We're slightly strange. I'll bind the reverse into full forward gear. And we're just waiting now for the brakes to come off. One second, I'm, I'm going to shut up for this section through the door whilst the loco uh, makes the noise.
One thing I am noticing is that the um, ejector sounds seem to be a bit hit and miss. I don't know whether it's some sort of limit on the amount of sounds that Trenton can play or, or what, but uh, I'm not actually hearing it. Sometimes I'll have to turn it on and off and stuff. It seems to be if the injectors are on, you can't hear it at all. And then it's not actually making the noise, but it's uh, not 100% certain. We're just pulling it to Dawlish now. Getting a bit caught out with the brakes here, you can see that the brakes are still only half released and I'm down to 30 miles an hour. You've got to be really careful with your timing. You can open the regulator a bit, eases into the pot hole. I do love the, uh, the valve noises and stuff that this loco makes, they're really good. It's got all the little noises that a GWI loco has. Just going to stop with the, the loco slightly out of the platform. I'm going to leave the brakes mostly released, so like uh, just above 15 psi, um, so that when I do release them to depart the here, they release quite a lot quicker than if they were on full application. So you can see with the vacuum gauge there, how slow it rises. I'm going to stop it there, because the brakes are on enough now to hold the train in position. And they'll only take 10 seconds to release, rather than 20 or 30, if the brake gauge is coming right from zero. I did notice again that they're coming along there, everything looked really dark. I'm not sure, it must be my game maybe. Uh, but it, it looks better now in the full sunlight. I'll get ready to depart, find the reverse to full forward gear, which I have. Again, there's no ejector sound, even the ejector's fully on, it's not making a sound. So if I stop the ejector and put it back on, maybe the sound will play. Yeah, it does. But obviously something not quite right there. Again, I'll turn the loco sounds up again, because nobody wants to listen to me rub it in. I like in the whistle sounds, I think they've uh, improved a lot. Maybe a little bit on the light side in terms of sound themselves, but uh, the way that you can operate them quite quickly without any delay when you uh, let go of space bound stuff is quite good. Overall, quite impressed with the sound set. I feel like it's one of the best ones that's uh, been on a Steam Loco today. So shutting the regulator because we're stopping at Dollar Schwaben in a minute. And there's no point going too crazy. We are running a little bit late just because of how intense this section is. So the ejector sounds actually worked this time, so I guess it's whenever you got the injectors on. Maybe there's too many sounds playing or something for TS to actually play it, I'm not sure. But uh, 
something going on there. Just applying the brakes here as we're coming to the horse farm. pull well through here so we get the rear of the train into the station. Quite a tricky manoeuvre. Can't even tell where the rear of the train is. I want to clear the crossover, obviously. That'll do. Stop anywhere here. Oh, we're going straight back on anyway. I didn't know if there was going to be something passing us here or not. Turn the injectors off now. So we're ready for a full thrash to exit from here. Uh, I'll give it full power. I'm going to show all the locos that come with the pack and everything when we actually uh, do arrive at Exeter. I've got to stop that Sarkosh yet, so it's all stations, but as far as Exeter. Quite good the amount of variety in whistles you can actually use on this loco. You got the control and spacebar plays a short whistle, hold spacebar plays a long whistle, then you got the bell whistle on the B key, the uh, sort of deeper tone whistle, which is quite good. And it's called a crow whistle. I've heard it called. We'll do an outside departure for this one. game sound out of it. I'm 
Some really nice detailing going on. Like you can see every rivet and everything on the tender. Some of the rivets on this side have got like weird cuts in them. I'm not sure if that's over the way TS works with the camera view or not, to be honest. They have them on both sides, so maybe it has something to do with the uh, way the cab view is made in TS. But I have to say, really enjoying this. It's a good, good drive. I think the biggest issue for it's going to be is the lack of scenarios, really. Is that you only get through with the pack, and I don't foresee that many being made. Obviously, I'll be able to use it in quick drive, I guess, but uh, there will be a bit of a lack, I think, in some places. Better remember to stop at Starcross, eh? Not even sure if Tom's managed to forget to stop at the station. So the regulator is still actually open, you can tell that because there's still steam coming from the chimney. But also it's still, it's not letting me shut it. So to fix this I have to open the regulator fully to actually shut it. Into second valve and then slam it shut. And you can hear that click as it goes back in. And what that is, is when you've been going for a while, it just needs to sort of have this lubrication or something, but you have to open it for it to just slam it sort of shut. And you'll sometimes hear it on mainline locos. On rail tours, I've heard it with uh, King of the First and stuff. When you'll be going along at 75 mile an hour, and then the driver will suddenly launch the regulator into the roof, then I'll slam it shut again. The noise is incredible. Timings seem very tight. I know it's based on the uh, real life timings, but they seem very, very tight. I literally got to thrash the guts off this engine to get it to we'll keep these timings, I imagine. So this is Starcross, just waiting for uh, loading to go ahead. I'm going to put a bit of water in to just kill some of this steam off because I've got way too much steam at the minute. By turning the injectors on, I can actually use more steam and uh, stop it blowing off constant, constantly. And you actually see that the valves sifting less and less as the pressure is dropping. Got to stop Exminster as well. So as the pressure is dropping, the valves stop sif stop blowing off as much, and the volume gets less. It's uh, really quite cool. The, inject the ejector sound works then. Now that may be because we've got no other sound going on, such as exhaust or running sounds, so it does look like it's a, a case of too many sounds playing at once, perhaps. So I'll uh, show up for a bit again and let the local be talking.
Now as we've barely got any water, I'm actually going to try and use the water troughs at powder on this, so we'll see how that goes. There are some water troughs in just over a mile or so. So the uh, water scoop is this, I believe, behind me. Can't remember which one of these it is. Yeah, it's that one over there on the fireman's side, obviously. So when we get to the water troughs, I'm going to lower the scoop with Control and T, and hopefully we uh, see this water value on the left-hand side, the tender water level. Hopefully we see that rise. Either that or bit the uh, scoop off. Doing it wrong. So we're just coming around to Arts Powder and the, the, scoop, the um, troughs are on the next straight after uh, the curve, after the crossing. So the troughs are on this next straight, you can see the signs on the left here, warning me of the water troughs. So the idea is that the sound locos will, in the old days replenish water on the move. With troughs between the tracks filled with water, you can just see it here. So that cross I believe tells me where the water trough starts. So we'll get ready as soon as we go into here, we'll press control and T, and we'll lower the trough. Scoop. There we go. You now see water coming out the sides. We're taking water. The value is going up. So we have to be ready to take the scoop back out again in a minute. Which is now. And you see we've stopped. You've got to get the scoop lowered in time before you come off the end of the trough, so otherwise you'll end up uh, wrecking the scoop. So we have managed it. We didn't get a full tender full, but we got enough. I do wonder whether a mana on load 11 would be up to 65 from Sarkos. Uh, I do feel like that's a bit ambitious, but maybe it's just because I'm thrashing it so much, but... Who knows? I suppose we better start slowing down. So I'm just going to prepare the low cost apart here, I'm going to get the cylinder cocks open. Reverse to full forward. I'm going to leave the firebox flap up because we've got enough coal in the firebox now to get us to Exeter. We've only got one more acceleration from here. I don't know if it'll be stopping at St Thomas here we are. Oh. No, actually we're not stopping at Exeter St Thomas, we're only stopping at St David's. 
So we got. I thought I pulled quite a long way through, didn't I? There. Oops. Again, I'm going to leave the local to do the talking now, all the way to Exeter, pretty much. So you can hear the full range from low to high speed.
so we're just slowing down now on the final one into Exeter. That was an enjoyable uh, little thrash though. So when I've done this I'll show off like I normally do the uh, full set of locos that you get in the pack. Drive virtually on time, so the timings are certainly uh, you can keep up to them if you drive below quite its limit. Essentially, probably while the scenario is quite a high difficulty of eating. There we go, that was really enjoyable. I really enjoyed driving that. £13.50 um, is what this has cost, so I'm really impressed with uh, the value for money there, uh, knowing how much will have gone into this pack. I'm going to skip across now, we'll do the, uh, like I say, all the other locos and stuff that you get with the pack, so uh, just bear with me while I do that. So I've placed in now the various different local and tender types that you get with this pack. I think I've got all of them, I'm not 100% certain, but I believe I've got all of them. So you got 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. I think I can count 17 or 18 there. Uh, and there's a couple of wagons that you get with the pack as well at the back, which I'll look at in a minute. So you got all the way from, uh, you got all the BR black versions, and you got BR green versions, you got GWR green versions. Now it's worth noting, it says in the manual, that if you use the GWR version of the local before they got the modifications in BR years, you actually get the lower power and stuff like that which is really cool so if you drive one of the GWR early ones you'll find that it's really underpowered and hard to drive just like they were in real life and that's why they all got modified obviously I think most of them are I'm not again I'm not up on the uh, gen side of things but I think the weathering this is a, a weathered black version now there's different versions for different years and stuff like that so uh, I can't remember exactly which ones I've placed here but they're all here it's just I can't remember exactly which one's which liking it, I mean, some of the texture may be a little bit low res or something, I'm not sure what's going on, but the number sort of stands out a little bit, but it looks alright. Numbers seem to have a weird bit of shading on them, um, but otherwise, you know, I say, without looking too keenly in detail at it, it looks great. I love the faded tender logo and stuff, it's really good. Nice. Then you got the clean versions. They're really nice as well. So you've got lined and unlined versions as well. So these are the unlined locos. 7827. This is uh, the preserved one. This is Lid and Manor. This is a preserved version of the loco. So you get preserved versions to place as well, which are just pristine. Such as this. This is the one that's based on the Peyton and Dartmouth. Lid and Manor. Beautiful loco. 7827. Again, I'm not 100% sold on the name plates. It's actually a fake sort of 3D effect. Would have been nicer to just have them in full 3D, I think. Um, you can't really tell when you're looking at them like that. Uh, so, if a screenshot actually, but when you go really up close, you can tell. Again, this is another BR weathered version. This is a BR lined weathered version. Uh, F. Bradley Manor. Really nice. Again, a few more fox coat. So these are all the black versions. You've got the lined ones again there. So well, these are the unlined weathered ones. Sorry, the lined ones are down there. So this is an unlined weathered one. And this is an unlined clean one. you got all the different tender logos and stuff you can place as well. So you got the late BR emblem on that one. Early BR emblem on this one. And then you got the BR green. This is quite a really faded BR green actually. I like that effect. I think I prefer the weathering on the BR version looking at this first inspection on the green version. I don't know if I prefer it a bit more. The smoke box is the bit that's sort of detracting for me a tiny bit, but overall, 
really good. I'm not sure if there's a slight colour change between the tender and the low card. I don't think there is, but it's, it looks a bit un weird. I'm not sure what it is. Maybe it's just my eyes. But it looks nice. I mean, the detail is superb. A bit of green paint slip there. But yeah, I mean, the detail and everything for 13 quid. Can't go wrong, in my opinion. It's a really solid simulation. So you got Bradley Manor here. This isn't actually a preserved version of Bradley Manor that I've placed, it's a, a, just a normal version. But what's bothering me with the Bradley Manor one is that we haven't had the other type of tender that Bradley Manor has. I think it has a hall tender from when it's been on the main line and stuff and that's not been included with the pack. Now I know it's been a bit extra work, but we can't simulate now Bradley Manor as it's been for many years with its uh, larger tender to, was it to give large capacity on the main line water-wise and stuff. I can't remember exactly why it had the larger tender, but that's a bit of a shame that we can't simulate that. Um, and also a version of Bradley Manor with AWS um, and whatnot in the cab as well would have been nice. Maybe if, well, I wouldn't complain if I had to pay an extra two quid to get that in an add-on pack, but I, I, I would like that. It's a shame that it hasn't been included. Um, especially when you think about all the work that went into some of the other packs. Um, there's a lot less variations in this than there was, say, of the panniers, I guess. So it would be nice if that could be added. So this is not a mana, this is a preserved version of the West Somerset's uh, mana. Looking good. So you got the GWR uh, online green down here. So these are the GWR versions. Talking mana with the GWR lettering on the uh, Tender. And you got a final version down here, Hinton Manor with the uh, type of logo. And then you got the wagons that are included in the pack. You get loaded and unloaded versions, and the beaver wagons or something like that. But the uh, are quite cool little wagons. That one, I like this one for the propeller on it. Again, the texturing is a little bit low res in my opinion, but. The actual model itself, and to have, to have them thrown in, I think it's brilliant. You get GWR and BR versions, um, and the propeller actually fits through the wagon, that's cool. So, yeah, I mean, I, I really have enjoyed my drive on this. Solid scripting and everything, the sounds are good, the model's good, it drives well. 13 quid. For this level of realism, you pay, if you're getting the sort of level of realism you get in an AP product. This is the Steam equivalent, and you're paying 10 quid less than what you pay for an AP product. Now, I know the diesel people obviously will say, well, it's a Steam lock, I'm not going to pay that much, but from a Steam enthusiast point of view, I think that it's, uh, it's really good value for money. And it's impressive what Steam Sound Supreme and Victory Works have done together. It's been really good. Would have been nice to see a couple more scenarios, maybe. Um, and as I said, the Bradley Manor thing with the lack of the tender and uh, an accurate cab would have been nice to have that in, but. Not massively uh, disappointed with that. Again, for 13 quid, I'm happy to pay a little bit extra if I have to get uh, those done fully. But overall, really recommend it, personally speaking. As I said, I'm no expert on Steam, I'm no expert on manners, I'm not claiming to be at all. From what I've just played there, I really enjoyed that drive. Hope you've enjoyed the video, guys. Please do like, share, subscribe, comment. We really do appreciate your uh, support. Thank you for everybody that subscribed as well. We've just hit 2,000 in the last week or so. Uh, and it's amazing to keep seeing people joining and stuff. And uh, it's really good. Um, don't forget Tom sometimes on Twitch. He varies it because he's busy messing around and stuff with uh, being a parent. Which is quite an important thing to be messing around with. But, you know. But he's usually on Twitch, he's usually on Wednesdays and Fridays, about half seven. Uh, if you keep an eye on the community tab on here, if you subscribe, you'll get the community notifications coming through. Or check us out on Facebook, because that's also where Tom will post, uh, and he updates when he's going to be streaming. Sometimes they'll just do them off the cuffs and they're worth watching, so please do check that out. And thanks very much for watching, guys. See you later. Goodbye.